All right, so we're, um, we're going to work on doing a couple things today. We're going to have introductions and we're going to go through the, the, the rules and the, kind of the traditional way of teaching this, um, this phonetic skill. We're going to talk about some of the solutions that Steve Tatum has come up with for the Tatum reading system and applying the rule to, to reading books that um, some of the books that Steve has written. Um, then we'll proceed to a little question and answer period. And um, this will take about a half hour. And if people want to stay on a little bit longer and ask questions, we're well, we'll be happy to stay, stick around and chat. So I want to introduce um, um, Steve here. Um, actually, first I want to talk about a little bit about LearnUp Centers. LearnUp Centers is a, um, a nonprofit literacy center in, in San Francisco Bay Area. We're on a mission to change how we teach all types and levels of learners to read. And we're super excited to be working with um, Steve Tatum. Steve is a, a 40 year veteran of teaching kids to read. He's been the director of reading at schools of, for kids with learning differences. He has um, taught everything from dropout prevention to adult learners. And um, we're super excited to have his expertise here today. Steve, wanna take it over? Sure, okay. Hi everyone. Uh, just a little bit about my background so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, I was program director at Denver Academy in 1973 for a little over 30 years. I trained all the teachers, but I had to learn about all the programs and I had to learn about all of reading. So I taught a group of teachers how to do systematic phonics, then a group to do directed reading for those kids who had phonics, and then whole language for those kids who had the directed reading. In other words, there's three parts to reading, systematic phonics, directed reading, and whole language. Whole language is where we want to get kids, to read because it's all about having fun and reading. But there's a systematic approach. But I have a larger view. I'm not just a phonics teacher. I wasn't just taught a phonics program and lived by that. Reading is much more than just phonics, okay? Um, I basically learned five different Orton Gillingham systems, the original Green Book approach, uh, alphabetic phonics, Project Read, Wilson, Slingerland, studied all those. I also studied LIPS, from Linda Mood Bell, which is, was a systematic phonics program that they don't use as well. And then of course I studied uh, reading recovery, which um, does not have a phonics program, but their books gave me an approach for my books, but I control for phonology, whereas they just control for syntax semantics. But I use that as kind of a reference. And then I studied whole language as well. I also was in dropout prevention for 20 years. Uh, I now presently work at Stern, one of the head teachers at Denver Academy moved out and worked with this cool called Stern School and I worked there with um, reading cases and then I am the program director of LearnUp. Okay, now prerequisite for this workshop, our goal is to teach you a quick way to do uh, break words down and I often, uh, I can knock this off in a day or two with, with kids. Now keep in mind, we approach things a little differently here. We give kids starts. So when I test people, they're, they could be a start one, which is they're just learning consonants and vowels. A start two, they can do one syllable words like the ones I have here, rid or mop. Start three, they're ready for two syllable words. Start four, they're ready for multi-syllable words and they know a lot of phonics. And start five, they have comprehension and fluency issues. So the first thing is we get the proper start. So often with a start three or four, we jump right into the vowel tag and vowel change in the first couple days. But, so my goal is to show you a quick approach. Now, a prerequisite for this is knowing about closed and open syllables. I'm assume the fact that you have awareness of it, but let me quick review. So you have closed syllables, and the way I look at it is the vowel is in a race and is running a race, and it can run a short way and bounce into the consonant. And you has can't, the short you can't see your screen. Can you? Okay. Your screen? Thanks. All right. Okay. So we see it now? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So we have in the word rid, we have a short vowel that's running a race. It runs into the consonant. It runs a short way and has a short sound of it. Mop, we have a short a vowel runs into a consonant runs a short way, has a short sound of ah, ma. Sad, short vowel, because it can run a short way, pup, and wet. Okay, so we start with those closed syllables. We also teach open pretty quickly, where the vowel can run a long way, it's opened up, 
and is very proud and says its name. So rye, the vowel can run a long way, is proud and says its name. It's also long, but I try to gift him right into the name. In mo, the vowel can run a long way, is proud and says its name of o. And say, it can run a long way, proud and says its name, etc. So these are prerequisites uh, before moving into the uh, vowel tag, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is switch screens for a quick moment. Okay, so we see that, Steve? Yes. Okay, now, so I pull out these words. I use a magnetic board. This follows my system where I have consonants and teams. I have what's called the Big Dipper, which are the 15 vowel sounds. Um, short vowels, diphthongs, the R family, uh, the greens, which are go, yellows, and reds. This fits in my reading system. Um, but whatever system you use, this will work. Now, vowels are in green, and the student should know what a vowel is and what a consonant is before you move. That's done early. So I tell them, listen, up to this point, you've been working with one-syllable words. I'm now going to show you a way to work with big words, okay? And it's called the vowel tag. Now remember that vowels are kind of running a race. We talked about in closed syllables, they're closed in, and open syllables, they can run a long way. Now, let's pretend in this word, we're playing tag, and they're in a race, okay? And the E's chasing the T, the N's attached to it, the G is uh, chasing them, the A chasing the G, and the A tags the G and freezes it, because it's freeze tag. Meanwhile, this can keep running because it's not frozen. Okay, so we've now divided this into two syllable words. And I'll ask the child, what's the first? Mag, what's the next? Net, put it together. What do we have? Magnet. Great. So then we go to the next. I'll say, okay, we're in playing freeze tag, right? They're all running. So we got the I is chasing the N, the B is going, they're all chasing each other, playing tag. And the A tags the B, freezes it. This keeps running, and we now have cab and second, in, and then we put it together. Now notice that the vowel tag work works with two consonants or one. You don't have to wait for VCV words uh, with this because they follow the same rules. You can use VCCV or VCV. That's one of the advantages. All right, so I want you to look at the next word, visualize it running. Okay, and this is running, this is running, the A tags the S, okay, and it freezes, it only gets to run a short way, it's frozen, so what's the first syllable? Bass, what's the next? Ket, what's the next word? Basket, okay, all right, now we're going to change screens. And let's do some vowel tagging. Okay, the first word, the A is going to tag the S. And I have kids actually swing under with a business card, the corner of a business card, or a pen, or younger kids, their finger, but they swing in baskets. Next one, travel. Next one, comments. Next one, cab in, cabin. Next one, bandit, bandit. Okay, now you try it. If you have a little business card or the tip of a pen without ink or even your finger, go ahead and swing into the next row. There will be a challenging one. Okay, so here's how it should have looked. The O tags the B problem. E tags the S response. Now TH is a team or a digraph, depending how technical you are, and it counts as one. So the A tags the TH, it counts as one sound. Ath, let, tick. So you have two tags, ath, let, tick. Satin and tunnel. Try the next row. Okay. So we have A tags the N, fan, A tags the S, test. Now notice when I'm tagging, I'm going behind it. I, the way I look at it is your tag is reaching over and tagging the shoulder, 
okay? And it freezes it right there. So you could say it's tagging the shoulder or this is where it's freezing, but we're going, we're tagging in front. Fan, tas, tick. Fantastic. Hundred, hundred, summit, summit, phantom, phantom, anthem, anthem. Okay. So we practice this a little bit, but the key thing is I am doing this before I am going to what I call the Valtag book. And so I'm partway through a, pre a earlier book, which may be dealing with blends, and I'm getting ready for this book. So as soon as I teach the Valtag, I go to the book. Here in our case, it's Go Ship. And I go to words in Go Ship, and we Valtag a book. We're not going into this for a couple days and practice right here. Baskets, travel, travel, river. Now, when I work with a kid one-on-one, -on -one, I alternate and model. So the child will go baskets, and then I'll go travel, and then he says the word, travel. Then he'll go river. I might do river, actually, because it has an er family, and if they haven't learned that, uh, I might do that one, river. And then they'll do comments, comments. Then they'll go cabin, and they'll say cabin. Then I'll go prob, lem, and they say the word problem. And then I'll do comments, they'll go comments and they'll go response. So we'll do those words. We are, we'll do these as well in phrases. And then we hop right into the reading where they use it. Now a child who has trouble with place, keeping place, I'll actually swing under to help them find the place. And then when they miss a word, I'll stay under it and point, which means sound it out. And then they'll key, if they have trouble with travel, I'll point. And when they have tr trouble twice, then I will take over and read with them. Now, if I'm on the internet, uh, there is always a second lag. So rather than read with them, I do what's called the echo drill. And that's where the child will read. And let's say he gets up to things and makes two errors. Then I'll take over and I'll say, listen, and when I stop, read just like I did. The ships would dock, get rid of their stuff, and then travel back up the river. Then the child will go, the ships would dock, get rid of their stuff, then travel back up the river. Then it's their turn to read a couple sentences until they make an error. Now, echo drill is a great way to teach pauses at commas, what dashes mean, what semicolons mean, and how to read with emotion. <clears throat> so they're reading a couple sentences till they take, make two struggles. Then I take over doing the echo drill for a couple sentences. Then I give it back. All right, so we're off and running. There is not a kid yet that I haven't started reading the first day I have met him. And I'm talking a five-year-old who, who knew no consonants and vowels. I do have a book with four consonants and one vowel. I believe the pragmatic introduction to reading early is crucial. Okay, so that's called the vowel tag. Now let's move to what's called the vowel change. Now the vowel change, once they have the vowel tag, the vowel change is saying not all words, just tag. There's some that change. So we'll do this word. Moment. And I'll say, have you ever heard of moment? No, I haven't. Now we're going to change the tag. And rather than tagging the M, the O tag, we're just going to tag the O. Let's tag it. Moment. Well, why is it mo? It's open. So we're moving from moment to moment. Let's try the next one. Best side. Is that a word? No. Change it. B side. Oh, that is one. Next one. Silent, is that a word? No, change it. Silent. Gravy, is that a word? No, gravy. Rival, is that a word? No. Rival, is that a word? I don't know. That's a vocab word. When you change, sometimes they won't know the word, and that's a vocab word. So you'll tell them that, that a word is called rival, and that's kind of your competition. Somebody you're competing with is your rival. All right. So hotel, hotel. Timid, is that a word? Yes, you don't have to change it. Limit, is that a word? Right, you don't have to change it. Final, is that a word? No, I don't think so. We'll change it. Final. Amen, is that a word? No, change it. All right, using your card, go ahead and tag or tag and change these last five words. Okay, 
So the O tags the D, model, is that a word? Yeah, okay. Do you have to change it? No. Unite, is that a word? No, change it, unite, there you go. Crisis, is that a word? Nope, change it. Crisis, is that a word? I don't know. That's a vocab word, so I would teach crisis, kind of means a conflict. Difficult time is a crisis. Disrupt, that's your Voltag word, it's a VCCV. Veto is not a word, so we move to veto. Okay, so I teach the vowel change. I practice. This is done again a couple days before I'm moving into the book. So I'm going to go into our vowel tag book, which is called French Quarter Phantom. By the way, the series I'm working with is my fourth to eighth grade series, which I wrote for feisty kids. This is French Quarter Phantom. And we're going to do some breaking here. Notice we have a review of the Valtag words up here. Jackson, many, phantom, metal, figure, talent. And then we have our Val changing words. So they would try this hotel, not a word, hotel. Local, not a word, local. Muzik, change it, music. And I have them do it both ways initially, just to practice. Began, no, began. Solo, no, solo. Relax, relax. Electric, that works. Could be electric, but electric works. Iron, no, iron. Open, no, open. Peopel, what's that sound like? People. Now, one of the things that my premise in word attack is it's not a perfected technique. That we're using word, word attack is approximation with context. Now, I'm not saying ever guess. I'm saying you sound out the word and then from that look at the context and does that work? Okay, so for instance here, if they go so doonly they saw a monster, I would say yeah, what's that word? They so doonly saw a monster. Oh suddenly. In other words, I'll often say back the word in a sentence so that I hit their oral language. Keep in mind with phonics, all you're trying to do is match the sounds to words that are already located in their head. So it needs to be fast approximation. The better, the better, but they're, you know, you're not looking for perfect word attack. Okay. Now, then we go right to the story, uh, Jackson Square. And again, the, if, if I have a child who has trouble keeping place, I will do this. Um, if they don't, I might have them have theirs up on their side and I'll have this on mine. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and slide under and I'll be the child. It was nine o'clock at night in Jason Square. So I'll point and I'll go Jackson Square, New Orleans. Jake and Gail White ate at the Oppen Gate Hotel. I'll point, Open Gate Hotel. Now he made his two struggles. So now I'm gonna do the echo drill. Then they went to Jackson Square to sit on the black iron bench next to the fence and watch people. Your turn. Then they went to Jackson Square to sit on the black iron beach bench next to the fence and watch the people. I'll do a couple sentences like that. Now these are not the best sentences to do it with. I like to do it once with lots of punctuation and pauses and dashes and think alouds with italics. This is where I kind of let them see how you read script, okay? All right, so we're practicing that, okay? Now we're gonna go back. Now a few uh, new points. Before we do it, I'm gonna go back and review. These are closed syllables. The vowel's closed in by a consonant. It runs a short way and is short. Rid, mop, sad, pup. These are open syllables. The vowel can run a long way. And it says its name, it's very proud. Rai, mo, say. The vowel tag, the vowel's reaching out and tagging the consonant, reaching out, baskets, travel, comments. Vowel change, you're tagging, moment, and if it doesn't make sense, you change, moment, okay? Now these are words here that fit both of the rules we covered. I want you to take a minute now and break those down. Okay, are we ready? Frantic. 
Trantum. That looks like somebody made a typo error. Wonder who that could be. Next word, Polish or Polish. Could be either one, Polish or Polish. Spinal, spinal. Novel, model. Unite, not a word, unite. Crisis, not a word, crisis. Disrupt, veto, de veto. Okay, a footnote. This is a technicality I don't get into early with kids, but just so you know, when syllables are unaccented, it really doesn't change E, O, or U. They're just held half as long, like emit, unite, omit. They're held half as long. But when they're unaccented, it changes A and I. A has an us sound, like in cadet, Notice in cadet, the debt is accented. Cadet, amid, amidst, extra. Notice the is unaccented. Stigma above. So this is a, a higher concept, but it's regular. In fact, your best bet to spell a in an open syllable is, I mean, spell a in an open syllable is with an a, like in cadet. U is not your best bet. When it's open, cadet. It's an A, amid. So repeat, this is kind of advanced, and this is when a child tries the A and the A and it doesn't work. Cadet's not working, cadet's not working, cadet does. Amid's not working, amid's not working, amid does. Extra, okay? All right, second point. I, when it's unaccented, which is usually in long words, has an is sound. So in constitution, that should be sty. Probably many of you noticed that. But since it's in unaccented, I will have an is sound. And that usually always says it in long words. Adventure, combination. Here it's closed in, and motive. So the advanced is A can say a, uh, and I can say it. Okay, now. Let's go to a more advanced book. This is what I call a start four book. And the, the whole book covers the program. But with my start fours, these are kids that can work out some two syllable words and know a lot of phonics. My first day, I actually check and clean up their consonants and vowels. I clean up their R family. And I teach vowel tag and vowel change in the first day or two. And then they move right, keep in mind, these kids at start four are reading like fourth grade and higher usually, but significantly below. And then I'll go to this sophisticated book called Pep Baker, Pep Baker and the Georgetown Ghost. This is, this goes to adult level, okay? All right, so let's look at what the words look like here. So notice this is chapter one. We review closed syllables. We then do closed syllables and vowel tag. Happen, finish, listen, philosophy, unlock, freshman, classical, parents, casually. So it's hitting harder vocabulary. It's not clear, clean vowel tag words, uh, but it's the kind of thing you need for advanced reading and our family and silent E. I'll do all that in the first couple of days with start fours. And then I'll teach phrase reading. And then we're off into the story. So the child would start. Peppa just finished listening to a lecture. Now with start fours, I teach them the phrase in the first couple days. So I will be teaching them how to do this. Peppa just finished listening to a lecture in his Western philosophy class. This was a night class held at Georgetown University. As a freshman, he had to take upper level classes held at late times. Pep didn't mind the night class. He liked walking on the Georgetown streets at night. Then I might do the echo drill. It was a strange October night, perfect for a 10 p.m. walk. The air was crisp, sky was dark, and the street lights lit up the rolling fog. So notice I'm emphasizing commas and pauses. Okay, so in summary, we talked about closed and open syllables. We talked about when you're getting ready for a book that has vowel tag words, we introduce the vowel tag first separate from the book, but then we go to words from the book 
so that we're actually practicing words he's going to see in a couple days. We'll usually do the first two chapters of words uh, before we even get into the book. Okay. Then we do teach the vowel change where you tag it, moment, and then change it to moment, hotel to hotel, etc. cetera. Uh, then we work a combination. Uh, and then we have the advanced uh, where the A also has an us sound. Now, the A is not to be confused with a schwa. A schwa is because we're lazy. And since we're lazy, we pronounce word like velvet, velvet. Uh, tunnel, tunnel to tunnel. We give everything an us sound uh, because we're lazy. A is not that. It's actually technically called an obscure A, and it has the us sound regularly when on X edit. The other ones are simply because we're lazy. And how I handle those in spelling is I tell them the word, and then I tell them what it looks like. So tunnel looks like tunnel. Happen looks like hap pen. Uh, I give them the correct phonetic pronunciation to help deal with the schwas. Then we also talked about high I in long words. It's unaccented and almost always has an it in long words, even though it's open. And that's because it's unaccented. We also talked about how we immediately apply it into a book a couple days before we move into the book. And then we talked about pressure release where the child will read and when they make two errors, we will take over for the echo drill for a couple sentences. Thank you very much. And I guess we're open for questions. Thanks, Steve. Let me um, just take your screen share back for a second, thanks. Yeah. Um, so let's go to question and uh, any comments that people might have. You can put them either in the chat or you can um, put them in the question and answer portion. I'm happy to turn on your, your microphone too if you'd like to talk directly to Steve. Just raise your hand. That's better. Yeah, if they talk directly. Hi, Sarah. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I was wondering with the, I thought it was really interesting how you, you, you phrased it as, um, the, the vowel tag. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd always, I, I teach Orton, um, and I uh, like directly kind of taught kids to look for that vowel consonant, consonant, vowel split in between the two consonants. Right. Do, do you ever directly teach that I, I call it a rabbit. Do you ever directly teach that or do you just kind of phrase it as the vowel? I do it, I do it exactly like I did. Now keep in mind, here's how I used to do it. Let's take the word velvet. First I used to write velvet and then I'd write it again. Then I would mark the vowels with dots and then I'd draw a line above it from vowel to vowel above both words. Uh -huh. Then I would divide the VCCV in the first word. I divided the second word then I'd accent the first syllable in the first word and then on the second. So I forget what word I said, but let's say it's velvet. I would then go velvet or velvet. That's mm -hmm. what I used to do. I used to do 25 to 50 one way, 25 to 50 way with both ways and 50 with both. What I found was all that was unnecessary interference. And it saved me, keep in mind, I've been doing this a long time. It right. saved me a lot of time when I just took uh, what I call mythological historical approaches and put them aside and went right, right to cut into the chase. So I find with it, when I get the vault tag, I can get a child to use it in reading within a day or two. So I do it exactly like I showed you. Okay, thank you. That's, that's, that's really important. That's really helpful. Sure, you're welcome. Lisa, do you want, Lisa, do you want to ask your question? Sure. I was just wondering if um, when vowel teams come into play and do you just train the kids to recognize the vowel team and that it makes one vowel sound so then it would be the, the chase after the vowel sound to the next consonant as well? Exactly. On my board, the teams, uh, most of my kids, this is pretty radical, but I've been doing this for 30 years. 
Most of my kids who are start ones, that means they know some consonants and vowels. I will clean up all their consonants and all their vowels day one and put them in a book. The next thing I do is teach the teams of ch, sh, f, n, n, k, and qu. Qu really isn't a team, but it, I don't really care. I put it with that group. And then when I vowel tag, I teach them that that counts as one and tag it. Now I use the word team rather than digraph graph because Technically, QU isn't a team, um, and teams work for kids. I used to be very technical in my language, and now I make kid-friendly language. So, so yeah, I teach them that it counts as one. Great, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments or observations that anybody would like to offer? Great. Great. Thank you for being here today. We're, um, we're going to be sending out a survey asking you to comment on today's webinar. It's our first inaugural webinar from, from LearnUp Center. So we hope that you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Please fill out the survey and let us know what you thought and what you'd like to see next. Um, LearnUp Centers is now teaching remotely like most of us are. And so if you would like to get training or if you have students that you think might be um, uh, interested in learning from our tutors, please send them our way. Um, and we're happy to exchange ideas with all the professionals in the field. Thank you very much for attending. Oh, by the way, yes, someone asked me if there's um, a, if we're going to be recording and sending. Yes, we'll be recording. This is a recording and we will be sending you the link. Um, and um, uh, we, I will send you the link to Steve's website so you can buy the books. The books do correspond to our structural literacy program. And so they uh, correspond to the, to the various levels and phonemic um, skills that kids are learning. And I know you mentioned it, Steve, but we are planning to do one a week of these. Right, so in, in, the, in the survey, I'm, I'm, I put up a question of what you would like to see next. So please vote on which, uh, um, which training you would like to see next. And we're happy to do what is most um, important to you in the field. Is there anybody else who would like to ask a question? I'm seeing a couple of things come over the chat, um, but I think we've addressed most of them. Oh, that's it. Great, thank you very much, everybody. And Steve, thank you for um, sure. your work today, I appreciate it. It's glad to do, it's fun. Be, self, be safe, be well, everybody. <laughs>